Good morning, everybody. Clever, this tech stuff, isn't it? I'm uh, absolutely delighted to be here. This is a very familiar slide because this describes the way that we've traditionally looked at the UK mortgage market. Direct, the small layer at the bottom, intermediated the, the big layer at the top in a, in a lighter green colour. And you can see the journey we've all been on, the peak of the, um, the unwise era through the recession, a very flat period with a 50-50 market, then ballooning out to an intermediated heavy market. And pretty much all of the growth in the market and slightly more has come out of the intermediated side. And that's the story of where we are today. Now, I look at the journey here and two things stand out. One is this is the way we've always looked at the market. And secondly, personal opinion, nothing more than that. The S stands for my forecast. Um, maybe a slightly smaller market in 2017 in the way that we traditionally looked at it. If you think of that as a share, and I mentioned about the drop to a 50-50 market and then the rise back to a, a more than 70% intermediated market. That's how we've got used to talking about it. It's a 70-30 market. Brokers, need, brokers provide advice, customers need advice. That's where advice mainly comes from. But this, I have to say, is the wrong way of looking at the world. Because the piece of the market that's not reported by the BOE, it's not reported by the CML, and yet it describes real customer activity is what goes on in product transfers. Because a product transfer quite simply, is a remortgage, but staying in the same place. You all know that. For the customer's point of view, it's still a mortgage. They're paying it to perhaps the same person, perhaps somebody different. It doesn't actually matter to them. The product transfer market is ballooning. And there's a catch because it's lightly intermediated compared to the direct business. And that's traditionally been direct advised. Very significantly these days, direct <coughs> execution only. The result of that is last year's data, which is not officially available, but I would add a few numbers together and come out with the fact that it's roughly 85% direct, 15% intermediated. Puts a very different complexion on what the real share of broker business is. Now, you could both be scared by that, but probably more importantly, recognize the huge opportunity in it. Because simply put, it's something like a 55-45 market in favor of the broker given the weight of PT activity is towards the direct side. Yet that's the business you trade in today. That's what you've got used to. That actually probably for many of you feels like a pretty good place to be. But the upside is moving 55-45 into a different place where 55 rises significantly. And if you look at what's been happening in the last few months, you'll have seen that not just Lloyds, who've been paying PT prop fees for years, but a whole swathe of other lenders have joined that market as well it presents a real opportunity for the brokers to compete much more strongly there. And there's a really important reason for this, because if you are writing pretty much three quarters of all new business in the UK, isn't it a tragedy that the stuff that you didn't write you don't get access to, but three quarters of the business that you did write first time round disappears off down a different route second time round? Because if you think you're in the relationship game, the data would tell you that actually you're in the relationship game at the beginning and then customers lose sight of you at the first product transfer opportunity. It sounds threatening, but actually it should sound like a huge opportunity. Okay, back to basics. Economics, well, the, the level of competition in the mortgage market is absolutely unprecedented. I think for one thing, as we look at the um, FCA's market review, they will, they, they will not walk far past the fact that it is an extremely competitive market. So I think the broad swathe of their response will be to say, this market is acting in the customer's interest. Now, undoubtedly, every regulatory review will find something, some bits that aren't right. But I think the broad position is it's very, very competitive. You only have to look at, at the degree to which pricing is competed against today. And indeed, boundaries are being moved on the risk, risk environment too. So firstly, very competitive. Secondly, behaviours are changing. I shan't do any more than say Peter's explained that extremely well. And then the arrival of technology, which is, I think, for the first time on the point of transforming what we do, not just changing bits of what we do. And again, Peter's covered that very well. The last couple of years have brought in two most remarkable things. Um, I had no idea as I went home last week, last year, from this event that the Brexit would result in the result it did. Um, equally, I was gobsmacked to see what happened with Trump. Um, 
the picture is a, the man's a gift, isn't he? I mean, <laughs> that's just extraordinary. Who would do that? Um, the leader of the free world, that's the answer to the question. So two, two very strange things have happened in the last couple of years that have genuinely upset the way that um, almost the world operated. The Dutch elections a couple of months ago returned normality. The French elections now in progress, result on Sunday, suggest another return to more normality. But we can't get past the fact that some very strange things have happened in the UK and the rest of the world. So I wanted to just draw a little bit of a distinction between what's happened on, in the residential market and the buy-to-let market. And again, this I think I'm hoping to serve to say the purchase world in buy-to-let, you'll recognize 2016 took a downward turn. 2017, I see that continuing to take a downward turn. Again, might be proved wrong. Remortgages, I think, will be significant, already dramatically geared towards a remortgage market, but the PT side, largely hidden, is huge. And I think I say largely hidden because pretty much Birmingham Midchairs was the only one paying product transfer PT fees until quite recently. Um, as a result, an awful lot of that was Birmingham Midchairs. But if you look at where this is heading, there is a very dramatic level of activity which you should be clued into. And again, I'll come back to that point later. I think the story on purchase um, and remortgages and PTs and so on upon residential is probably a little bit clearer and more, and more normal. The key thing here is customer behavior is changing because the inputs that lead them to make up their mind on what to do, particularly purchase, which involves a, in many cases, brave step, and people feel less courageous when they're unclear about the future. Um, you, you can add an, a range of other reasons why people aren't moving house to the degree they would have done before, and certainly the friction costs of stamp duty and so on are other reasons too. And then, of course, we've seen what's happened to buy to let. The customer need is moving more steadily towards how do I refinance, refinance better what I'm doing at the moment. Huge, huge customer need ties to huge broker opportunity. Okay, just a quick point on service. Um, you can look at elements of the mortgage process and say there are bits that are definitely working better than they did years and years ago. I think what this chart says is, broadly speaking, every lender is getting better at what they do. That's an average of lenders. Um, there are seasonal inputs into that as well, which you'd expect. But actually the trend, you look at the market data, buy to let 30 days to offer, moving down to 20 over the last few years. Um, not a dissimilar picture in residential too. That's, try, that's people recognizing the pressure to do better and you're telling us all the time about things we need to improve. Um, but this only goes so far because in truth, if you think about it, 15 to 20 days to get an offer for a customer who's in a hurry is a pretty grim position to be in. And it's quite hard to tailor the brilliant fast process to the people who need brilliant fast processes. It's much easier to work on averages. I think that takes us to a world where we have to look far more carefully at the end-to-end -end journey that this describes. And that, of course, is where technology and transformation starts to arise. I, I think if you look at the names on the boxes rather than necessarily all the detailed content, we're looking at a process that's been stuck in time. Because the things that need to happen are pretty much the same now as they have been for decades. You could definitively argue that there are better ways of, for example, researching the market than what was the case before. Um, but fundamentally, the things that have to happen on that journey haven't changed. So the answer is, little bits of this journey are getting better, but the journey itself is incrementally improving. None of it is transformationally improving. That, of course, is relevant to us all. And I think this is where, for me, the rubber hits the road. And I've said it earlier on. Um, Brokers' absence from the majority of PTs in the UK is a tragedy for you and your businesses. If this is a typical life for a human being, and you know, forgive it for being probably wrong and a bit flippant, um, people's needs change over their life. People's financial needs change during that journey. And if you think of it, it just in terms of these categories, and I can now put ticks anywhere you like, and you'll probably tell me I've missed some things out here as well, but fundamentally, there are parts of this journey which require different levels of financial solutions to. Not every answer will work for every customer at every moment, but the point is their needs will change over their life. And isn't it a tragedy if the broker's part of the journey begins here, 
and three quarters of those people that you speak to take the next part of their journey, not with you at all, in fact, not even with your sector, but they disappear off back to a bank and get the deal direct from the building society or the bank. Because that, for me, doesn't describe a relationship. That describes a transaction. If I go to market research, and I, I do the same sitting behind the mirror glass and watching what people say, probably the, the most cutting thing that you hear, and this describes banks, advisors, and estate agents, forgive me, any in the room, it's a general comment, customers will describe that as, it's a transaction, they do their job, I never talk to them again afterwards. But that's not the role that you want to perform, and, and actually many of you do perform, but it's not the job that you must perform in the future, it's where's the relationship. And that's what, in research, customers speak very proudly about almost the family friend who sits around the dinner table, who helps them out with their stuff, introduces them to the rest of their family and their friends and their work colleagues. And you do that over the life. Because the point is, the broker relationship needs to exist throughout people's lives. And there'll be moments when it's at high intensity. And there'll be moments when it's keeping in contact. And Peter talked about technology. But there's nothing where it's no contact. You know, zero intensity is always wrong. So how do you manage a relationship through the customer's life stages such that you're relevant throughout their life? Let me just draw together a few conclusions then. I've drawn a picture that says, in the world I describe, total advances in the UK will be up by about 5%. The catch, though, is that's not in the way that the Bank of England and the CML describe it, because I think that will be flat or possibly even slightly down. But the point is, what you don't normally get reported is product transfers. So watch for the media looking to describe a world where lending is reduced. It won't be true. But if the media is so inclined, they'll want to make a drama out of this. Interestingly, because the public view is kind of set by the Daily Mail, loathsome newspaper that some people think it is, maybe I do too, but because they were so favoured for Brexit, I think actually they've toned down the criticism of the lumps and bumps in the UK economy. So this, this might not manifest itself in the way that we would ordinarily see, because I think the Mail is keeping its voice quiet on this one. But watch for a media wanting to make a story out of things are slowing down here. Because confidence is everything in our market. buy to let yet to find its level. And there's lots of commentary. And I'm, I'm bored of the buy to let specialists talking about three quarters of all their buy to let business is on the limited companies. Because that's not true. Sorry. It is true for them in that little corner of the market. It's not true for the market as a whole, which is nearer to 15% sort of level on average. I think transactions, unfortunately, will continue to fall. And that's a tragedy. Um, there are hopes around the number of new bills which will um, stabilise to grow, but there's lots of ups and downs possible in that sector. We desperately need new houses, we definitely need more transactions, and it'll be interesting to see if the government takes any action at all to help housing transactions. And, and my perspective on house prices is they will not go negative in the country. Um, they will be bumping along at the 3 to 4% sort of territory. We'll see if that one comes through. Remember, that's an average. There will be some regions where it's tougher than that. But on average, I think it will still be positive. That, again, is a hugely important statistic for consumer confidence. Um, the three quarters of the market, which represents advised by intermediaries, um, it is a battle that feels largely won. I, I can't see that changing. Interesting question on robo advice, which I think we'll come back to on the panel. Um, but I do think um, intermediaries are clearly winning the advice war. But when it comes to execution only, and Peter described this as segments where execution only or maybe robo advice will have greater strengths, direct is clearly won the battle around execution only for now. And my challenge to you guys is how your business model starts to grab that business back because they were your relationships before they went down the execution only route. And then finally, technology, and this is probably important words, technology is currently enabling current processes but undoubtedly, Peter's words were the same as mine here. It will create winners and losers. So where do we get to? I actually describe a huge opportunity for brokers in redefining the UK mortgage market. The key thing is customers have simple needs in some areas of the market, but rarely do I listen to an interview with a customer and, and feel anything other than 
here is another unique person describing another unique situation. There are very few people who are simply straightforward, go through a credit score, and there's nothing complicated they need to describe around the needs that they have. The complexity of those needs means advice is enormously relevant and important. And I, I simply don't think um, that will change. If anything, it will probably get more complicated. The trick here is when they have the simple need two, three, five years later, how does your model cope with that? How two, three, five years later than that, does it then cope with the next thing in their life that they want to return back to a proper advice solution? How do you manage your relationship with them through that journey? And then technology, will, it won't define the winners, I don't think, but it will definitely help the winners to succeed. And the reverse, sadly, will also be true. Thank you.